Dr. David W. Kim, this is part five of the lecture on structural rhinoplasty on this week's video blog. We've talked extensively about the various aspects of structural rhinoplasty, and now we're going to discuss how the principles of structural rhinoplasty are relevant on the various components within the nose. So we'll start with the soft tissue. Now we talked a little bit about the differences of thin skin and thick skin with regard to rhinoplasty, but this is another illustration that shows the point. If you imagine the nose as a sculpture, as represented by this vase, and the skin over it represented by this covering, if we make changes to the nose or the sculpture, particularly ones that are reductive in nature, the thick soft tissue envelope will fail to drape cleanly to reveal those changes. Now the good thing is if there's a mistake as shown by the little crack here, that mistake is also going to be hidden but the desired changes are also not going to transmit. So with thick skin, the better bet to create the desired contour changes is to actually expand the nose rather than shrink the nose and to create some contour that pushes and stretches the skin envelope to see the contour changes transmit through the skin envelope. Now with thin skin, you have more flexibility in making a reduction. However, any change, even changes that are not intentional, uh, imperfections are going to reveal through that thin skin. An additional point about skin is that it contracts over time. Now this is a patient who, is, uh, who saw me for a little scoop of the nose and a little bit of a crooked nose issue. Before surgery, you see her here. Three weeks after, you see that her soft tissue is full at her tip. The soft tissue is a little full at the bridge. The nose is rounded on the side. The scar between her nostrils is still visible. That's because at three weeks, the skin is still evolving and changing. And in fact, the skin will continue to change for months and even years after surgery. This is three months after surgery. You can see that the nose is taking greater shape and form, more triangularity, more shape on the profile. The scar is almost gone. One year after surgery, the nose is much more sleek, and two years even more so. So there is a continued progression of skin changes after surgery. This also highlights some of the problems you can see with, see with thick or thin skin. This nose was uh, reduced in terms of its infrastructure, but it was reduced beyond the limitations of the skin's ability to contract and show those forms. So, this patient has what we call a polybeak, this very rounded, bottom-heavy, uh, full swollen appearance to the nose because the skin was unable to drape onto the structural changes underneath. This is the opposite problem. Someone with very thin skin, the surgeon didn't do a perfect job creating desired contour changes to the underlying cartilage. So the cartilage is a little bit uh, asymmetrical and that is revealed uh, very clearly through that skin envelope. Now if this patient had thicker skin, you may not see this degree of distortion. The nasal septum is the second area. We, we, we did describe this as the partition between the two sides of the nose, but it serves lots of other functions. It serves as a structural wall that holds up the nose. So if the bridge has collapsed, you see a saddle or depression here. If the septum is overdeveloped, you can see a bump in this area. If the septum toward the tip angles toward one side or the other, you may see a crooked nose. The septum has to be preserved in order to maintain strength of the nose. We talk about an L strut. So this portion of the septum on the bridge, this portion of the septum down at the base, the so-called L type configuration, must be strong by the end of the surgery. Um, now this can either be done by leaving it alone. In some cases it has to be changed so that the nose can look the way you want. If that L strut is violated, you may have something like a saddle deformity if the L-strike gets uh, depressed in the central portion of the nose, or you may lose tip support if the l strut at the bottom of the nose uh, weakens. Structural rhinoplasty aims to prevent uh, l strut problems by keeping the l strut strong uh, through structural techniques. This will conclude part five, and we'll go on to the middle and lower portions of the nose in the, in the final lecture.